Thanks for tuning in at Brackies. Hello everyone and welcome to video number 15 in how to make a game, a cool series on making a video game in Unity. Wow, it's been such a long time since the last one. Um, I'm uh, of course sorry that it's it's been such a while, uh, but I've had a lot of cool stuff to do in the meantime. So. Since the last video, I've started a series called How to Make a 2D Platformer, which I really think you should check out. I uh, also started a series called um, How to Program in C Sharp, which is great if you want to make the transition from JavaScript to C Sharp, or if you just want to become sharper on your language skills. And also, I've uh, started a, a smaller series covering some of the new stuff introduced with Unity 4.6 beta, because Unity 4.6 has been released as a public beta, and along with it, the all-new Unity GUI system, which is what we're going to be using today. So today we're going to be creating this cool menu. I can hit play here, and you can see that we have a slider to adjust the music volume, a play game button, and a quit game button. Today we're not going to be making th uh, the actual uh, sort of ev events happen when you actually interact with the menu, but we will be setting it up like this. Um, so before we get started, I just quickly want to say that today's wallpaper can be downloaded at braggies.com slash wallpapers. The cool character here was made by a guy called Camillo. Also, if you have any questions, please head over to forum.brackies.com, where I, among many other developers, are just waiting to answer your questions. And then, of course, if you want to download this uh, beta, head over to unity3d.com and go under Unity 4.6 beta, and you can download it for free here. So that was it for the amazingly long intro. Now we can go ahead and get started with today's video. So I'm just going to go ahead and, and delete the scene here and load up the level that we, uh, we had when we left last. And what we're going to do is we are first off going to duplicate this because we're going to be using many of the same elements. So let's just select it in the uh, project panel and hit Control D. And we can rename this to main menu. Now let's make sure to double click this so that we are in the main menu scene. And uh, let's go into the scene view and have a look at what we what is going on here. So let's find our ball and hit F to focus on it. Now we can select uh, all the platforms except one. So we're just going to select all of them here and just leave the one in the center. Then we can select the coin also and delete that. We're also going to delete the GM object. And uh, on the main camera here, we are going to remove the camera control script. So just hit remove component on that. Now let's, with the camera selected, let's just zoom a bit in on the game object here. Let's move the camera up a bit and then let's rotate it uh, along the Z, uh, oh no, that's going to be the X axis here, so the red ring. Just going to rotate it down a bit and maybe move it even more up. So it's going to look something like this. Uh, we can go ahead and uh, shift from local to global uh, orientation so we can move it up on the correct axis. Something like that looks pretty good. Uh, I just want to make some room for the actual menu items up here. So just have it kind of as a, uh, just have the sky box as a backdrop and then this to accompany the, uh, the main menu itself. This looks pretty good. And you will notice that we can still roll around with the ball, which I think is a pretty fun little thing to be able to do in a menu. Now, next up, we are going to be using the Unity GUI. So, uh, if you find anything to be difficult along the way here, I suggest you go ahead and hit up uh, the, uh, uh, the GUI-specific videos that I've done lately. Um, they should be quite a help. So now we can right-click in the hierarchy, go under UI, and let's just create a button. And you can see that once we create this button, th three things are actually created. A canvas, which is uh, kind of which represents the screen, 
so the total screen area that you have to uh, you you've got to play with then we have a button which is the button and then an event system which is automatically created with any GUI this allows us to interact with the GUI system all of these are important so please don't delete any of them cool so what we want to do is we want to focus in on this canvas so go into 2d mode hit select the canvas and hit F and now we can zoom in so this is our screen we can select our button and maybe uh, change the anchor so go up here under the anchor presets and hit the top uh, middle here that one so the flower looking anchor here is going to be moved to the center of the top and uh, now let's scale this button up a bit so just drag in one of the corners hold down alt and hold down shift and then maybe just scale it a bit up here also uh, that might be a bit too big let's just scale it down a bit again something like that now we can take our text here and uh, we can go ahead and change the font size to something like 24 and we can change the text to play game and I'm just going to do this with capital letters that looks pretty cool now we can take our button um, we can move it up and move it a bit to the left so just something like that looks pretty cool and uh, yeah I'm actually pretty satisfied with that now we can go ahead and select the button and over here on the right hand side you can see that we have an image component and under the source image you can see that it has the uh, default GUI sprite selected I'm just going to choose none instead because I don't want any of these corners. I don't really like the look of them. Uh, and then I'm going to take the color and make it completely black, but still keep the alpha value at something like 150. Then we can go under the button, select the text, and let's just change the color here to completely white. We could also go ahead and make this a bold text. What you can also do is go under the canvas and select pixel perfect though uh, I'm not going to be doing this here um, for reasons I won't go into in this video so what we can do now is we can um, we have this nice looking button let's just duplicate it to the other and move it to the other side here uh, so we also have a quit game button S let's select it hold down shift D oh it's control D I believe yeah command D if you're on a Mac now let's move it hold down shift while you move it to constrain it to one axis and you can move it over here but even better what we can do is we can simply remove the negative the minus here from our x position and it will move it over and it even illustrates what we just changed you can see it says 144 here and it has this uh, this line showing how we've moved it and that's because our position x y and z is always relative to our anchor which is up here so this is a 144 for uh, units from our origin to the anchor and that's completely correct now we can go under this button and we can change the text to quid game oops no space and that's basically it so now we have two cool looking buttons and you will notice that when we uh, uh, play the game and hover over them they will indeed animate which is pretty cool next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a slider with a label so let's go under the canvas let's right click hit UI and then uh, let's do slider and uh, let's go into the scene viewer again here Let's again move the anchor to the top uh, middle here. Change the anchor preset there. Now we can move up the slider. Something like that. Again, holding down shift to only move on one axis. Now we can uh, drag here up while holding down alt to drag on both size, sides. And uh, just drag it over so it snaps nicely with the buttons. Then what we can do is we can make a little bit of room for our uh, label. So just move it in a bit there. 
Now let's go ahead and change uh, the default value. So go down here to value with the slider selected. And let's maybe do 0 0.6 or 7 for the default music. Um, or let's actually make this maybe the general audio slider. We could do that. You could also make it the music. Hmm. I don't know. It's up to you. Uh, but the default value is going to be 0 0.7. So what we can also do is we can change the appearance of this a bit so it looks a little nicer because I don't really like the look of it as it is right now. So the image here is going to be the background image. You can see that if I color it red, this is what uh, the element looks like. And again, I want to change this from the default background sprite to just none to make it just a fill color. And we can maybe go ahead and darken this quite a bit. Maybe even darken it as much as the button. So again, completely dark and then an alpha of 150. Then we can go onto the slider and you can see we have the fill area, which is the uh, fill that illustrates how much, uh, uh, that kind of illustrates the slider value, is what I meant to say. And then we have the handle, which is this little element right here. So let's go under the fill and select the fill uh, object. Now again, let's just select none as the sprite. I think that looks nicer. And maybe just darken the white here a bit. Um, also, what I actually want to go ahead and do is I want to change the alpha to uh, 255, which means it's completely visible, and then go uh, drag the, uh, the, uh, the color down a bit. You could also go ahead and make this this an actual uh, color if you would like it to have some kind of, of style. Um, I actually might go ahead and, and just do that. So let's make it this kind of uh, cyan color. Looks al almost like futuristic and then maybe just a tad down with the alpha. That actually looks pretty cool. Now we can go ahead and select the handle slide area and uh, uh, just open that up, expand that, select the handle, and again, uh, you can go ahead and select none here, but the, uh, the handle sprite I actually like okay. Um, so let's just change the color instead, bump up the, uh, the alpha completely, I don't like the way these elements show underneath, let's so just bump it up all the way, and then change the uh, the color to something you like, maybe experiment with the colors here, no, I'm going to make that completely white. Just maybe tone it down just a tad. Something like this I think looks pretty nice. And you will notice now that again our slider is animated. So when we hover over it and click it, it will um, change accordingly and uh, everything is actually working. So the last thing that we are going to do is just put in the label. So to do this, uh, right click on the canvas again, go into UI and now select just text. And uh, let's make this, let's center this on the Y axis by pressing here. We can then change the text to, let's say audio. Could put volume in here. We could also just do volume. I'm gonna do audio and then uh, just a um, a, a colon and uh, let's change the color here to maybe completely black uh, just making it more visible yeah I think that's pretty good we could also try, try just a, a white that's not really visible enough uh, we could go ahead and put uh, some effects on this but uh, that's for another video so let's just make this completely black and um, Maybe even scale it up a bit. So let's change the font size to something like 17. That looks a lot better. Uh, and now we can just position it. So just go over here, move it up. Uh, again, change the anchor to the top middle, just like all the other elements. And let's scale it in here. Uh, we're going to have to change the slider just a bit to make it fit. Uh, something like li this look actually looks pretty nice and there you have it. So um, maybe we can just move the slider over and there.
yeah, I'm actually pretty satisfied with that. So that it's it's actually that simple to create uh, menus or, or GUI elements inside of the new Unity 4.6 GUI system. So that's basically it for today's video. In the next Make a Game video, we are going to expand on this by making the buttons and the slider actually do something. I just completely forgot to add the music for our main menu. So in order to do this, simply drag the music prefab that we've already created into the hierarchy and music will play when you play the scene. We will have a look at making this music seamlessly transition onto the next level when we actually implement uh, the, the button events. So that will be for a future video. So again, thanks for watching. I'm looking forward to seeing what series you would uh, prefer to see. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.